Each year, more than 70 million tonnes of aluminum are produced worldwide. But to reach this impressive figure, hundreds of millions of tonnes of bauxite must be processed. Bauxite is the rock from which aluminum is extracted. So, how is aluminum made? To find out, let's head to a bauxite mine where this process begins from scratch. Aluminum, one of the most abundant elements on Earth, has been key to industrial development, although its large-scale use is relatively recent. In 1825, Danish chemist Hans Christian Ørsted managed to isolate it, but the extraction process was so expensive that aluminum was considered more valuable than gold. Everything changed in 1886 when Charles Martin Hall and Paul Hero invented the hall Aero process, which allowed aluminum to be extracted from bauxite much more affordably. Later, Carl Bayer improved the Bayer process, refining bauxite to obtain alumina, which enabled mass production of aluminum. By the 20th century, the lightness and strength of aluminum made it an essential material for various industries, such as automotive, aerospace, construction, and packaging. During both world wars, it was crucial for aircraft manufacturing, and in peacetime, it became a symbol of industrial progress. Today, aluminum is one of the most widely used metals in the world, with applications ranging from advanced engineering to everyday products like cans and utensils. But how does a simple reddish rock become one of the most used metals on the planet? The process begins by clearing vast areas of land rich in bauxite. Excavators and haul trucks are used to prepare the terrain for drilling. Strategic holes are drilled and filled with explosives, which break the rock into smaller, more manageable pieces. Once the explosives are detonated, the next step is debris collection. Given the size of the areas involved, excavators and trucks are used to speed up this process. The extracted materials are transported using techniques like side casting, which involves moving the excavated material to the sides of the trench or pit, making it easier to handle and store. The terrain is carefully prepared and the resulting trenches are used to deposit the extracted materials. In some cases, more than 10 cuts are made in the area to efficiently organize the materials and reduce dust dispersion at the mining site. In any mining operation that uses explosives, the resulting debris comes in a wide variety of sizes. While side casting handles the smaller fragments, stockpiling is essential for the larger pieces. These rocks and minerals are transported using conveyor belts, cranes, and other specialized equipment, and are organized into massive piles that are ready for the next stage in the aluminum extraction and production process. Once the material piles are formed, the process of selecting the minerals to be loaded into shipping containers begins. These containers are securely packed to prevent any loss during transport to the ports. Upon arrival at their destination, the minerals are unloaded and transferred onto ships that will carry them to the processing facilities. The first step at these facilities is known as digestion. In this process, the crushed bauxite is mixed with caustic soda in a specialized device called a digester. The caustic soda reacts with the aluminum hydroxide minerals in the bauxite, dissolving them. The mixture is then heated to the appropriate temperature and pressurized, accelerating the chemical reaction and forming sodium aluminate, a compound made of sodium, aluminum and oxygen. Once this step is complete, the material is moved to another facility for further treatment. Here, seed crystals are added and calcination takes place, a process that converts sodium aluminate into aluminum oxide or alumina. Precipitation is a key part of this process and seed crystals play a vital role by serving as a base for the formation of new structures. First, the sodium aluminate solution is heated to the proper temperature. Then, seed crystals are gradually added, allowing the dissolved aluminum hydroxide to adhere and grow on them. Special trays and other tools are used to optimize this process. As the aluminum hydroxide molecules attach to the seed crystals, alumina crystals begin to form. Once this stage is complete, calcination begins. Workers separate the solution from the trays and cool it in a controlled manner. This cooling reduces the solubility of sodium aluminate, causing the aluminum hydroxide to precipitate and bind to the seed crystals, forming larger, purer alumina crystals. These crystals are essential for the next stages of aluminum processing and production. Once the alumina crystals reach the desired size, 
they are separated from the sodium aluminate solution through thickening and filtration processes. The crystals are then carefully washed to remove impurities and ensure their purity before moving on to aluminum production. Finally, once the purified alumina is ready, it is subjected to a drying and high temperature calcination process. This brings us to the final stage of the process, preparing the anodes for aluminum smelting. Anodes, which are large blocks of carbon, are essential components in the electrolytic cells where aluminum extraction takes place. The first step in preparing them involves using pre-baked carbon blocks that are specifically designed to ensure efficient operation. These blocks are then transported using conveyor belts and specialized machinery that work in sync to ensure proper handling. Next, a steel rod is precisely inserted into each pre-baked anode block. This rod ensures proper electrical connection during the aluminum smelting process. Then, molten iron is poured into a mold around the joint between the rod and the carbon block. As the iron cools and solidifies, it creates a strong conductive bond ensuring that the anode is durable and functions correctly during smelting. Once the anodes are ready, the production of ingots begins. The molten aluminum is carefully poured into moulds to give it shape. This process requires great precision to avoid turbulence and to ensure that the mould is properly filled. The moulds, made of cast iron or steel due to their heat resistance, receive the metal at high temperatures and once poured, the aluminum is allowed to solidify. Mechanical arms and conveyor belts are used to move the solidified ingots. Before being used, the ingots undergo a rigorous inspection for quality, weight and other essential characteristics. In facilities where larger ingots are produced, the process begins by collecting molten aluminum in a specialised machine. During this step, the aluminum goes through a purification process that removes impurities, ensuring that the final product is of high quality. For large ingots, it is crucial to achieve smooth and uniform surfaces. To accomplish this, in addition to securing them in safe moulds, operators manually remove any air bubbles or debris that may have formed during the process. The next stage is casting, where workers use ladles or crucibles to pour the aluminum in a controlled manner into the moulds. This pouring must be precise to avoid turbulence that could affect the final quality of the product. With careful control, high quality ingots are produced ready to be processed in subsequent stages such as rolling. Additionally, electrolysis is used in these facilities. This key technique extracts aluminum with the required purity, ensuring that the metal obtained is suitable for a wide range of industrial applications. The molten aluminum is processed in a high temperature furnace where it is maintained for an extended period. This heat treatment allows the aluminum to reach its purest form remaining in a liquid state at around 700 degrees Celsius. In this state, the metal is easier to handle, making it possible to shape it as needed for production requirements. After this process, large aluminum ingots are produced, some of which can weigh 30 tonnes or more. These ingots will go through additional stages to be transformed according to the specific needs of the industries that will use them. The next step in processing these ingots is rolling. Before beginning, the ingots are transported to a preheating facility using cranes and mechanical arms. At this stage, the ingots are heated to 500 degrees Celsius to ensure that both the interior and exterior reach a uniform temperature. This intense heat makes the aluminum more malleable and easier to shape, optimizing the rolling process. Once preheated, the ingots go through a scalping process, during which imperfections and surface residues from the top and bottom are removed leaving the ingot with an almost mirror-like finish. Then, the ingots undergo another preheating stage to prepare them for the next step, rolling. Rolling is carried out in a reversible mill, which features powerful rollers driven by two motors, each producing 7,000 horsepower. These rollers compress the metal, significantly reducing the thickness of the ingot, which can weigh up to 20 tonnes. Even after cutting machines remove the leading and trailing ends of the ingot, the process continues until the desired thickness is achieved. Once the ingots have been significantly thinned, they still need to go through the cold rolling process. At this stage, the aluminum, cooled to temperatures between 90 and 140 degrees Celsius, is fed into cold mills to further reduce its thickness to meet final specifications. After this process, 
the aluminum is rolled for the first time, forming a coil that can stretch up to one and a half kilometers in length. However, the work is not yet finished as there are several intermediate stages to adjust the thickness or correct any imperfections in the rolling. By the end of the entire process, an ingot that originally measured 9 meters in length and just over 50 centimeters thick is transformed into an aluminum coil that can span several kilometers when unrolled. Once the aluminum coils are ready, they are sent to the manufacturing department for distribution. Each coil is tagged with unique codes to ensure strict quality control and proper handling. The final product, whether in sheet or coil form, then undergoes a thorough inspection, is trimmed to remove imperfections, and is rolled onto spools to be processed, packaged, and finally shipped. But not every industry needs aluminum in the form of thin sheets. So what happens when thicker aluminum bars are required? This is where a special technique comes into play, rolling combined with drawing. The process begins by heating the aluminum ingot until it becomes a thick plate. This plate is then cut into strips of the required width. These strips undergo cold rolling, which improves their finish and reduces their thickness. Afterward, the strips pass through a series of progressively smaller dies. This step not only lengthens the strips, but also reduces their cross-sectional area, transforming them into aluminum bars with the desired final diameter. Once this process is complete, the aluminum coils are carefully stacked for storage, ready to be distributed to the market or sent to other facilities for specific applications. And that is the entire process behind aluminum production. What do you think of this process? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our next video.